And Brazil's Bajos is 37. The Austrian Rakic is much younger at 25. Rakic is two and a half inches taller at 6'4". The Austrian would also come to battle with a three-inch reach advantage. With the official introductions, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC light heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a freestyle fighter holding a professional record, eight wins, one loss. He stands six feet, four inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Vienna, Austria, Alexander Rakic. And now introducing his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner, a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record. 19 wins, 5 losses, 1 no contest. He stands 6 feet 1 and 1 half inches tall, weighing in at 204 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Francimar Bodabajos. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Mark Goddard. So our octagon ranger is Mark Goddard. Luciana letting us know we are just about to hit round number one set for a maximum three fives in the light heavyweight division Francimar Bajos on the left of your screen against Alexander Rakic the debut fighter from Austria I had a great conversation with Rakic Dan he's a, a really young a really young guy who was surprised by the call up when he did he'd been out for a little while came back and, and earned himself a very quick first round win got the call and said now it's time to to prove that I belong here I don't just want to wear the t-shirt I want to prove that I belong here at the top well getting the win over Francis Marbahos will definitely do that I mean he's, he's such a veteran in the in mixed martial arts we've seen him several times in the octagon so far That's, what seven times I believe so far so he's a familiar face to UFC fans that was a beautiful snapping jab from Bahos but if Rakic can get a win here immediately it puts him in an interesting position to start calling out some of the you know the lower tier top 15 guys well he invested heavily by going over to american top team for five weeks training with luis enrique and junior dos santos among fellow europeans yes in Ayari, and also christoph jocko really enjoyed his time out there taught him about toughness he said to me because you're training so consistently with such a high level and he really sharpened his mind but he knew where his his skill level was at as a result and he comes here with a lot of confidence you can see he's expecting that big powerful overhand right from Bahos. you can see he's trying to draw it with his lead hand he's also spent some time at the all-stars gym training with the likes of jimmy manier and alexander gustafsson a couple of years ago so he has gone out on the road trying to seek the very best training his fights however have been mostly in austria so this will definitely be the toughest test of his career and, and he absolutely knows that as he ate a big overhand right there fancy my okay the good okay, thing is though, did well to eat that right oh time the uppercut on that overhand Interestingly now though, he's taken the big shot of Francis Marbahos, so does that give him more confidence? You can see now he's starting to move forward a bit, a bit more aggressively. He was perhaps waiting for that one big shot to come and now he can start work. Bahos with 10 knockout victories out of 19. Four subs as well, 11 first round wins. That's a clubbing right hand that he has there. You can see it, almost see it coming down as well. He's sort of in the holster right now, but you know that he's got cruel intentions for that right hand, does Bahos. Well, definitely. And when somebody throws it with such power and speed as well, you know, even though you're expecting that punch to come, sometimes you can't avoid keeping it, uh, you know, can't avoid taking it on the chin. Beautiful work from Rakic there, crowding forward. You can see his confidence starting to grow. At six foot four as well, you've got to think that training with Alexander uh, Gustafsson would have been an excellent learning experience yeah. for him. He's got a nice frame for this yeah, weight division. Most definitely. That was a nice low kick. Francimar recognized that was a powerful kick. In fact, you can see the marking on his on his calf muscle. You can see right on the outside that's already started to bruise. It makes that lead foot very awkward. Oh, that's nice. nice. Fainted and got through that uppercut. Beautiful shot there from Rakic. As I was saying in the walkout, John, intelligent striking. That's exactly what I expect from him. You know, with, with years and years of experience as a striker, 
it, it, you just you know you understand when to put the foot on the gas and when to pull back. Yes, he's an Austrian state champion in kickboxing. His parents are of Bosnian descent. He was, however, born in Austria. Very proud to represent both flags. Another thing that I enjoyed talking to him about um, was religion. He's actually an Orthodox Christian and said that he not only prays for success but also prays for his opponents so that they don't get injured and you know he doesn't halt anyone's career. Which I think it's just a really nice thing to know about someone. He's yeah. always thinking of other people as well. I this was, is very much about sports. Definitely. I was trying to retire people, John. The less people in the division, the less <laughs> fights I have to have. Just get those guys out of there quickly. But I, no, I appreciate the sportsman-like uh, uh, mentality of that. But I think Sometimes it works very well. You've got to go get them, though, John. You know? Yeah, but this guy's from Austria, Dan. And in Austria, mixed martial arts doesn't really fit into the culture. I think That's he's true. trying to change hearts That's and true. minds over there. That's true. So Baho is forcing his powerful frame against Rakic and the fence. Rakic did a good job of turning out of that. Well, I was taking a good look at that uh, that leg, but it's now Rakic that's, uh, that's looking for a takedown. Looking Interesting. That single denied. End of round number one. So an interesting first round, Bajos was clearly looking for the big punch early on and by the time he, he managed to throw it over the top and clip the chin of Rakic, Rakic was starting to gain in confidence and he was starting to push forward a little more, landed some good shots towards the end of the round and then as Bajos clinched it was actually Rakic that switched it on him and started to threaten the takedown. Good feeling out process. You can't go, can't go back a little bit. Give him more water, give him more water. Do you understand? All, all good, but look the distance. Both fighters are off of their stools in this light heavyweight contest. Bajos in the yellow, Rakic in the white, round number two. Just looking down at my notes, Dan, Bajos turned pro in 2005, Rakic turned pro 2011. Wow. It's a lot of difference in time on the mat. It is, it is. It's a lot less training camps, though, so there is always... Oh, oh wow. massive over right, overhand right from Rakic. Very well worn by Bajos, but those low kicks are going to take the base away and leave that chin exposed. You can see Bajos has actually switched his stance now from those low kicks in the first round. The reddening on the outside of his calf muscle shows that there's pain there. Oh, very nice. Answered back there by Rakic. Good Muay Thai catch counter on the kick. Is Rakic using his range as well as he could be, Dan? He seems a little bit at the moment to be leaning over his lead leg. I think he's still concerned about that, that uh, the overhand right. He's still concerned about the power, possibly the level change from Bose as well. But um, you've got to think if he steps in too deep with that lead leg, it does leave it exposed for for whatever level change or or overhand Bose is looking to throw. But he, he's stealing some of the power out of his shots. This is better work. He's actually done better work with his kicks in this fight. Really nice work. Yeah, he invests in those kicks as well. They are loaded up. Oh, he's feeling this, John. You can see in his body posture now and his movement. He knows this finish is coming. He's finding his jab without taking any punishment on the uh, on the uh, on the end of it. Picking at his opponent. Oh, nice right, straight right to the body. Expecting to come high with that. I can see a left hook on the end of it as well. Bajos showing a couple of different stances with his back against the fence. That's a big leg kick. He had an opportunity there to circle off though, Dan, and didn't take it. Seems to be quite confident with his back against the fence. Well, the thing is, John, when, when, you, when you've got to reach disadvantage like he has in this fight, it is helpful for your opponent to be moving towards you. Obviously, you don't want to be trapped against the fence, but the two options in this situation for Bajos is the overhand right or the level change. And both, both situations, he needs his opponent moving forward. Okay. 
So it's like a semi-invitation. Kind of, yeah. There, there were some fighters that really enjoyed shooting off the back foot, off the fence, uh, against aggressive opponents. But, you know, it does leave you vulnerable. Sean Shirk was someone that was always good at, at uh, shooting off the back foot. But then you remember in the BJ Penn fight, he, uh, he, he doubled legged onto a knee. So there is a risk because it's easier to time you. So you can see that level change there. It's more obvious to time it if he's backed up against the fence. Right. Tyron Woodley as well, another man that likes to shoot forward for a double on the yep. back foot when he's under pressure. Yep, a couple of great takedowns against Condit in that fight off the, uh, off the fence. I am listening in that UFC's inside the octagon down. <laughs> it's good to hear, John. The strength of Bahos is evident. Dana White looking for a fight is back. The new episode available now free on YouTube. Don't miss it as Dana, Matt and Dean head to San Diego where a promising young flyweight gets his big shots. It's Dana White looking for a fight available now on YouTube. So the host now in top position. He got the, the reap takedown and now he's sitting in the guard of Rakic. This is a much safer position for him, but Rakic is not doing a great deal here. I'm wondering whether he's allowing the referee to, to, to wait for a stand-up, but now Bahos has passed the half guard. Well, I know that they had been working a great deal uh, on Rakic's wrestling. I'm sure they would have had that covered over at ATT and also at Gym 23 who he represents in Vienna but he does find himself with his shoulders pressed down against the mat but he is looking to get on a hip which is positive to see will he try and wall walk now looking to hit the switch nice and it does so to get good. back up beautiful work does he have it wobbled they certainly fatigue in the legs of Bohos Rakic making him pay for that takedown Dan the outside leg is still bruised. So we just got to be careful down. holding his hand so low, Dan. He's, he's swinging getting, from the hip here. He's getting a little enthusiastic. Bahos is throwing back when he feels his back touch the fence. There's always a risk there. He does have that one punch power. Oh, nice takedown. Good timing on that. Yeah. Reach down really deep and low to almost ankle pick with the power of Bahos. He's just able to lift that. Put Rakic on his back. Nice competitive round. So uh, more of a dominant round for Rakic in that one. Started off with a big powerful overhand right. Um, caught the kick and chopped into the lead leg again of Bahos. And a nice switch at the end was able to get him back to his feet. Now he was taken down once more before the end of the round. But you've got to think... The majority of the good work was done by Rakic in that round. A stronger round than the first. He's constantly picking up momentum in this fight, looking better each round. That's the last round that is going to decide everything. Take him, take him down. You will take him down. Breathe deeply. I believe in you. Next Saturday, UFC 215 goes down from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, with history hanging in the balance. In the main event, Demetrius Johnson chases a chance at UFC history with his 11th straight title defense. He faces a stiff test in rising flyweight star Ray Borg. UFC 215 next Saturday, 10 and 7 in the West, only on pay per view. third and final round now I called the last round competitive Dan you said a bit more of a dominant round for Rakic but Ho's had a lot more grappling that he was successful with but we're not sure how the judges are scoring this one yeah he did get two takedowns and after one of the takedowns he was able to spend a little time in, the, in guard top but otherwise Rakic got back to his feet exactly yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a nice switch it was a good scramble to get back to his feet and he was constantly pressing he knows that the knockout is available he has to just pick the right shot and Bahos with that, that single punch overhand knockout power. Rakic is taking his time and trying to find that opportunity without risking too much. You can see the damage now on Bahos' face. He's opened up just under his eyebrow. 26th professional fight for Bahos. He told the UFC that 
his thoughts are just to do a good fight tonight and to win of course Rakic on the other hand told me that his, his, his opponent is experienced but he's also older smaller and striking and wrestling are not on his level and I think that Bahos is having a lot of success with his striking uh, sorry his wrestling that was good takedown defense there it was he also told me that when Bahos reaches in like that he's gonna eat something just needs to get the timing on that uppercut or indeed a knee I'm surprised we're not seeing a little more variety in his striking he started out with some variety working on the uh, the inside and outside low kick mixing up his uh, his punchy combinations as well but now he seems very focused on the right hand Oh, he sent a little invitation to meet him in the middle of the octagon there, Dan. Yeah, I, I don't think Bahos really understood what he, what he was talking about because he's, he's up against the fence again here. <laughs> Just another corner of the octagon. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. Like I said earlier, John, you know, his best work, I feel, has been with his kicking. He's landed good punches, but the damage, that the work that we've seen that has really taken effect on Bahos has been the kicks. I would like to see Rakic use some straight shots as well, Dan. I mean, the jab works nicely, but I haven't seen him really fire a straight right hand. It's more either overhand or looking for that uppercut. Yeah, well, the, the, right, the straight right that he threw in the second round landed clean, but then he started to work to the body more. I, that was nice. That was a good uh, stifling low kick. You just, you, you kind of feel like he knows that Bahos has got one big power punch that he can always throw. And he's just, he's being a little too tentative to find his way in. Rakic moving his head side to side that's a very nice straight right to the body that was a nice straight right to the midsection there they're the kind of things that are going to slow your opponent down drop their hands expose their chin and also stifle that shoot as well that shot as well because you've got to think if you're aiming for the midsection of your opponent you're punching low which is so much more difficult to level change underneath Oh, oh, it was a punch Referee from Rakic. It was a punch. He's allowing the fight to continue. Rakic coming forward with a bit more intent now. Excellent work from Mark Goddard, knowing that that was a closed fist. Always paying attention. There's the straight right to the body again. Switching his stances is Rakic. Trying to use a straight left. That start switch is useful for when he throws his kicks. I said it before, John, I'll say it again. I feel like there's a left hook there. You can see as Bahos is moving forward. His hands come together, he meets his knuckles in the center. Coming straight. Oh, that was a low shot. You are a little boy, a bias towards a left hook. Well, though, you know, it works for me. You, know? it's, uh, <laughs> you just see the openings when that thing works. But you, you've got to think, if you're working to the, to the midsection with the straight right, you can come high with the left hook, and a lot of the time, his hands will be together. Uh, clear oh, low kick there, good clear, uh, clearly to the uh, to the boys. Give him a minute to recover. That's nice. Rakic working in behind the jab. Mahoz now faking with the overhand just got his head out of the way there that could have been his last opportunity for a takedown John we're into the last 40 seconds Rakic has been stalking and picking him off for my money the hose always dangerous however very heavy-handed it's got that Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt as well if he can get it to the mat 20 seconds left another ditch attempt counter strikes from Rakic as he moves forward yes nice footwork by Rakic to avoid that shot and Landers land some counters you know there's a disciplined performance again from a new debutant in this uh, the light heavyweight division oh got clipped there though and that sounds that was good that the was end a, of the fight it was a good performance against the veteran like Bahos always risky to come in and fight someone that's had so much UFC experience but Rakic looked good it was a seasoned performance by Rakic who found himself on the front foot, Dan. He wasn't, he was having to go and look for this fight. 
and he did so against a guy who is aggressive with the counter strike. So you could see in the early rounds, in that first round, you could see there was a there was a concern of the power of Bahos because he was able to dictate the center without doing a great deal. He stepped in a couple of times and landed some shots, but then Rakic started to come on strong. He started to find his range with his jabs, with his single shots, the uppercut and the straight right. But again, I'll say it, the best work was done with the kicks. It was a nice switch in the second round to get him back to his feet. But, uh, but for my money, the work was done with the kicks. The low kick chopping to the outside leg of Bahos took away a lot of his movement and left him a sitting duck. Okay. Exactly. Well, let's see how the judges have put it down with pen and paper. You never know how they score these contests. But whatever the weather, it was a good performance for the debut fighter. Let's send it inside to Bruce Buffer. He has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges scored this contest 30-27 for the winner. By unanimous decision, Alexander Rakic! A shutout on the scorecards for Alexander Rakic. Congratulations to him and his team. Looking forward to seeing what he brings next to the Octagon. Next to the Octagon, it's a battle with athletes coming from very different wrestling